Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at Ripsilus paradoxa. It's fairly common to find in cultivation. It's actually considered endangered in the wild, but a lot of people have it in cultivation, so that's good. And it's pretty easily recognizable. It's got sort of a, they call it paradoxa because these little segments sort of alternate like in a chain-like manner. We have two different subspecies. We have Paradoxa subspecies Paradoxa, and we have Paradoxa subspecies Septentrionalis. So we have them together here. You can see the difference in the growth habit. Similar, but yet different. So this particular Ripsilus Paradoxa subspecies is from a more northerly part of Brazil than is Ripsilus paradoxa subspecies paradoxa. So that's just an interesting little tidbit there. It sort of moved to a different area, began a different branch of evolution, so it's got a little bit different characteristics from its sister plant. And I like the way it branches out. Sometimes these look like a mobile that you would put over a baby's crib, the way they branch out in this group of three. Really cool. And to look at it, it looks like it's a nice, long, continuous branch. But actually, this has determinate sections. This section here is approximately, oh, I don't know, six or eight inches. And after that six or eight inches grows, it stops. Then from this end point, we had another section grow from which it twisted around, chained around several times. Then it stopped there. Now it's got two new growth segments coming down from there. And as you can see, we've got some, whoops, gotta put my hand there to keep it in focus. We've got some buds. What's interesting about Ripsilus paradoxa is the buds are what's known as being erumpent. In other words, the buds sort of form under the epidermis of the plant. And when they get big enough, the bud sort of punches through the skin or the epidermis. And there you see the bud. You can just basically see the perianth, which is the sepals and petals in the bud there, rolled up together as a bud because it hasn't opened yet. You cannot see the ovary of the flower. The ovary remains buried within the uh, areole. So they're really very interesting from that standpoint. Over on this side, we've got more buds. More buds popping out from the aerials. You can kind of see a little bit of um, skin there. I don't know of any other term to call it. As the bud pops through, it pops through that little bit of, uh, let's see, there you go. A little bit of tissue there it popped out when it popped through. Here's a flower that's open. I'm going to see if I can twist this around so you can see it a little better. It's snow white, really beautiful inside. Look at there, kind of got a little pinkish sepals, but the inside of this flower, isn't that gorgeous? Basically pure white, pure white uh, stamens. The stigma is pure white. We still don't see the flower ovary. It remains buried within the, within the uh, stem. Here's another open flower. Very pretty. And I have got several more buds. We're currently in April, 2024. My mom's in the hospital. She broke her hip, so I came home and I was just delighted to see that I had so many buds on this plant. Here are a couple that flowered already and it looks like possibly we'll see if we get some uh, we'll see if we get some seed or berries out of this plant. So this is Ripsilus paradoxa subspecies paradoxa. It's very recognizable you can oftentimes find these in big box stores at the determinate ends you usually get growth at the at the end of the segment there. 
this one did a little weird thing. It put out three new branches, not from the end, but from the middle of the segment. So that's pretty cool, pretty interesting. A little bit different. But you know these plants have a mind of their own. And then when you get to the determinate end of that branch, there's another two se segments that popped out. So this plant has been grown in quite a bit of sunlight. You can see how it's flushed reddish. And it's been outdoors during the winter. It's had sun, it's had cold, it's got some scarring here. So it's not got the most beautiful growth. It's got some corking up here. I've had it out, outdoors for a couple of years. Very pretty. Now let's compare the growth on this paradoxa with subspecies Septon trianalis. Septon trianalis, as you can see, it's got smaller diameter of the branches. And the chaining, or the way it kind of twirls around the segments, is not quite as evident. Here's the beginning of a segment, and it sort of turns turns back, turns the other way. Not quite as noticeable. There are areas from where it flowered last year. So not quite as noticeable in chaining, but you can definitely tell that it's the same species. And the flowers on this particular variety have really yellowish. Uh, here we go very yellowish um, sepals. Not quite as snow white as the other variety. You can see it had the rumpant buds, which is similar to subspecies Paradoxa. And let me see if I can find any more. Here is a spent flower. So they're very cool plants, very interesting. Here are a couple of, quite a few that have already flowered. Like I said, I was out of town. I didn't, uh, I wasn't available to catch these when they were open. The one that I showed you before is about the best I could get. These are the flowers as they're fading. So it's pretty interesting, the origin. Oh, look, we've got another bud here. Great, 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 great. The origin of the name Septon trianalis, the meaning is from the north. And the reason it was named from the north is that Paradoxa grows in the southern eastern portion of Brazil along the coast in the Atlantic rainforest. And the variety or the subspecies Septon trianalis grows in the northern eastern portion of Brazil. And the word septentrionalis refers to the seven stars of the Big Bear or the Big Dipper and the seven stars as we know if we've ever uh, studied the constellations, the se seven stars of the Big Dipper are related to Polaris, the North Star. So septentrionalis, seven stars, point to the north, sort of a roundabout way of saying that this is something that comes from a northerly portion of an area. This one is greener. It's been grown in more shade. It doesn't have quite as much uh, branching as the other plant. It's got a lot of aerial roots there. So that is Septon trianalis. And I'm going to take you around to the other side. I have another uh, Septon trianalis specimen that I'll show you. So this is my other variety of Ripsilus paradoxa, subspecies Septon trianalis. And this one is kind of interesting because you can really see the paradoxical growth, one direction and then the other. 
Not quite as dramatic a chaining as its uh, sister plant, subspecies Paradoxa. And the branches are a lot finer. And I haven't seen any buds popping out of this particular specimen. I really like this plant. It's so pretty. And I think I like my Septon trianalis better than subspecies Paradoxa. This has grown like crazy. I've had this plant for about a year, exactly a year ago in April. And it was, you know, it had growth about to here. And just in a year, it's gotten this much more growth. Extremely long. I mean, extremely long. Let's take a look at this segment here to here. to here where it branched out and on down to here. So very cool, a cool plant. Well, we've gotten a little bit of sunlight out here this afternoon, so I thought I'd line these three different uh, varieties of Ripsilus paradoxa up for you to see the three of them. You know, in the wild, there aren't just the two extreme species, this really, really thick, and they're really, really thin. But there are more than likely very different intermediate varieties such as this. This is kind of an intermediate uh, segment here, intermediate in size. These three are basically kind of three different colors. We've got, of course, this one in the middle was grown in a lot of sunlight. The other two have been in more shade. But there are differences between different clones. And they're all the same species. It's been determined by uh, phylogenetic testing. They are all interbreed and make seed with each other. I really like how it branches out. And remember we talked about with, with our Ripsilus paradoxus, subspecies paradoxa, we talked about how the buds sort of erupt out of the stem of the plant. And that's an interesting growth characteristic. It also occurs not only with flower buds, but with new growth. So rather than have new growth that just simply pops out of the end of the, there you go, pops out of the terminal end of the segment from before, this one actually begins to grow and it'll grow underneath the tissue of the previous segment and then when it gets to be a certain size, it'll pop through the uh, epidermis of the plant. And in this case, we have the middle section that popped out. The little end has not quite broken free yet. So really fascinating type of a growth pattern. You'll see that quite often with Ripsilus paradoxa. It's what they call erumpent growth. Here we see two segments. They didn't quite get stuck like the other one that we just looked at. They're coming out pretty easily. Here you can see a little new stem segment that's popping out from there in an erumpent manner. Pretty cool. It's kind of kinked there because it had to punch through the epidermis of the plant. So that is one of the unique characteristics of Ripsilus paradoxa. So I hope that helps you a little bit if you're trying to decide what kind of a plant you have. This subspecies Septon trianalis, it has determinate lengths to its segments. So if the segment starts here, it'll go for 8, 10, 12 inches, then it'll end and then a new segment will grow out from that juncture there. Then that segment will grow six, eight, 10 inches, and then another one will grow out. And like I said, oftentimes you'll have one, two, or even 
three new branches growing out from a juncture there. So it's very cool. I really love this plant. There's another plant that is a totally different, a totally different species. It's not even in the same subgenus. This is sometimes referred to as a mini paradoxa. This is Ripsilus pacheco leonis, subspecies catenulata. And cat, cat, catena actually means chain in Latin. So the same kind of chaining growth habit occurs with this plant, but it is not at all related to Paradoxa. It's in a totally different subgenus. And it's actually, if you look at it, very different. Look at the red aerials and look at the little, uh, it's a little spine there in the aerial. The closest relative to Catenolata is Ripsilus flagelliformis, and that has got some spines on it. So that is actually the closest relative to Ripsilus pachecoleotis subspecies Catenulata. I'm hearing from other people that this particular Ripsilus is going to be possibly moved into its own species, so it won't be considered a pachecoleonis anymore. We'll probably just be calling it soon Ripsilus catenulata. But for now, you can see the chaining. It's got a very delicate chaining. So sometimes you'll see this plant on eBay or Etsy and they'll be calling it a mini paradoxa. It is not a paradoxa at all. It's not related to paradoxa, other than that they're both Ripsilus. This plant, Catenulata, can actually have very, very long branches. They don't grow off always in short segments as Paradoxa does. You can have a branch that's got very, very long segments and they can just keep growing, keep growing. They don't stop after six or eight inches and then shoot out a new, uh, a new growing branch. But I really love, I really love those little thorns right inside there. Isn't that interesting? A little teeny tiny thorn at every aerial and the little red marking at the aerial makes it very distinctive. It's really a beautiful thing also. But not a paradoxa, not at all. You may see it on eBay called mini paradoxa, but it's not a paradoxa. And we shouldn't call it that because that causes confusion for people that want to know actually what they really do have. This is Pacheco leonis, subspecies Catenulata. So here we have Paradoxa, subspecies Septentrionalis. Paradoxa, subspecies Paradoxa. Look at the beautiful olive green. This is a lighter green. Of course, it's been grown in more light. Here's another plant with nice deep green. This is another uh, subspecies Septentrionalis. And then, for comparison, this is Pacheco leonis, subspecies Catenulata. We saw the bloom on Septentrionalis from the intermediate size clone here. Got a lot of gold in it. This is the bloom on Paradoxa subspecies Paradoxa. And this particular Septentrionalis has not bloomed for me yet, but there's always tomorrow. It's got a lot of growth and it's very green. So I'm hoping now that it's put on a lot of growth, I'll eventually see some flowers next year. Okie doke. Isn't that pretty? So I hope you enjoyed. Take care and we'll talk to you all again later. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Talk to you later. Bye bye.